Hello everyone. Welcome to Brilliant Public School Online Edu Classes. Today we are going to, going to continue with the chapter number 9 of class 8 history that is the making of national movement 1870s to 1947. In many cases people resisted British rule non-violently. In others different classes and groups interpreting Gandhiji's call in their own manner protested in the ways that were not in accordance with his ideas. In either case, people link their movement to local grievances. So let us look at a few examples. In coastal Andhra and interior Tamil Nadu, liquor shops were picketed. In the Guntur district of Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu, tribals and poor peasants staged a number of forest satyagraha. In many forest villages, peasants proclaimed Swaraj and believed that Gandhi Raj was about to establish. In Punjab, the Akali agitation of the Sikh sought to remove the corrupt Mahans. In Assam Tea Garden, laborers demanded increase in their wages by shouting Gandhi Maharaj Ki Jai. In Khera Gujarat, Patidar peasants organized non violent campaigns against the high revenue demand of the British. In Bengal, the Khilafat Non Cooperation Alliance gave enormous communal unity and strength to the national movement. The People's Mahatma. How did Mahatma Gandhi got its title as Mahatma? People thought Gandhiji as a kind of Masiha, as someone who could help them to overcome their misery and poverty. Gandhiji wished to build class unity, not class conflict. Still, peasants could imagine that he could help them in their fight against Samindar and agricultural labor believed he would provide them land. Mahatma Gandhi, as you know, was against violent movements. He abruptly called off the non-cooperation movement when in February 1922, a crowd of peasants set fire to a police station in Chorichara. 22 policemen were killed on that day. The peasants were provoked because the police had fired on their peaceful demonstration. Once the non-cooperation movement was over, Gandhiji's follower stressed that Congress must undertake constructive work in the rural areas. Other leaders such as Chatranjan Das and Motilal Nehru argued that the party should fight election to council and enter them in order to influence government policies. Through sincere social work in villages in the mid-1920s, the Gandhians were able to extend their support base. This proved to be very useful in launching the civil disobedient movement in 1930. The formation of Rashtriya Swayam Sivak Sangh that is RSS and the Communist Party of India were two important development of mid 1920s. The Congress resolved to fight for Purna Swaraj, complete independence in 1929 under the presidentship of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru and on 26 January 1930 was consequently observed as Independence Day all over the country. Purna Swaraj would never come on its own. It had to be fought for. In 1930, Gandhiji declared that he would lead a march to break the salt law. So, on 12th March 1930, Gandhiji began his famous march to Danji with his chosen 79 followers to break the salt laws. According to this law, the state had a monopoly on manufacture and sale of salt. Formally launched the civil disobedience movement by breaking the salt laws. The combined struggle of Indian people bore fruit when the Government of India Act of 1935 prescribed provincial autonomy and the government announced election to the provincial legislature in 1937. The Second World War broke out in September 1939, which worked as a boon for Indians. The Congress leaders were ready to support the British war effort, but in 
Britain, they wanted that India be granted independence after the war. The British refused to concede the demand and the Congress minister resigned in post in protest. Mahatma Gandhi decided to initiate a new phase of movement against the British in the middle of Second World War. The British must quit India immediately. He told them to the people, he said, do or die in your effort to fight the British, but you must fight non-violently. Gandhiji and the other leaders were jailed at once, but the movement spread. It specially attracted peasants and the youth who gave up their studies to join it. Communication and symbols of state authority were attacked all over the country in many areas. The people set up their own governments. The first response of British were severe repression. By the end of 1943, over 90,000 people were arrested and around 1,000 killed in police firing in many areas. Orders were given to machine guns crowds from airplanes. The rebellion, however, ultimately brought the Raj to its knees. So let us now discuss about towards independence and partition. Meanwhile, in 1940, the Muslim League had moved a resolution demanding independent states for Muslim in the northwestern and eastern states of the country. The resolution did not mention partition or Pakistan. Why did the League ask for an autonomous arrangement for the Muslims of the subcontinent? From the late 1930s, the League began viewing Muslim as a separate nation from the Hindus. In developing this notion, it may have influenced by the history of tension between some Hindu and Muslim groups in the 1920s and 1930s. The provincial election of 1937 seemed to have convinced the League that Muslims were a minority. They would always have to play second fiddle in any democratic structure. This feared the Muslim that even they may go unrepresented. The Congress rejection of League's desire to form a joint Congress League government in United Provinces in 1937 also annoyed the League. The Congress failure to mobilize the Muslim masses in 1930 allowed the League to widen its social support in 1945. After the end of war, the British opened negotiations between the Congress, the League and themselves for the independence of India. The talks failed because the League accelerated the demand for Pakistan. In March 1946, the British cabinet sent a three-member mission to Delhi to examine the stay. This demand, 16 August 1946, was declared as the direct action day by the League. On 3rd June 1947, the partition plan was announced and Pakistan came into existence. The joy of our country's independence from British rule came with mixed emotion of pain and the violence of partition. Finally, India became independent. So, we end our chapter here. Happy learning everyone.